Hello, my name is Sibulet and this is a tutorial about normal maps. What are they? What are they used for? And how to create them in the process of making of custom content for The Sims 4? For example, the image on the left is an original skull of a statue and it's 4 million polygons. In the middle, it's a retopology of the same model and it's now only 500 triangles. Now, by baking the difference between the high poly model and the low poly model, you will get a normal map. The third image you can see here is the low poly model plus the normal maps, which will look like exactly the same than the first one. So this technique is very useful. So you can make low poly item that will look like high poly model without affecting the game performance. And any item you make will run smoothly on any computer. So what is a normal map used for? In The Sims, you can add details to your mesh with the normal maps. For example, on this flutter, the wrinkles you can see here are made with the normal map. If you watch the speed meshing video of the texturing of this object, you can see how I made those wrinkles in Substance Painter. In this item too, actually, you can see here that I made a blanket, but the blanket doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Like you can see on the original mesh, just a flat blanket. It's just an illusion, completely flat. With normal map? without normal map. It's the exact same model, like the exact same object. Everything is exactly identical, except this one I put a normal map and this one I didn't. You can see here that we can clearly see that this is drone texture, whereas here we can see the embers. Although calling the Sims for texture normal map is actually wrong, because this is how a normal map usually looks. It's purple with all bright color. But in the Sims 4, this is how it looks like. It's all gray, because it's not a normal map. It's actually a bump RGBA. A is standing for alpha, meaning like the normal map, we need to have an alpha layer. And because you will need an alpha channel, you will need to save it in DDS, because the DDS format will retain the alpha channel while the PNG won't. The PNG can save the transparency but doesn't retain the alpha channel. So how do we convert a normal map for the sims? For that you will need a 2D editor software like Photoshop or GIMP. The only thing is that it needs to handle alpha channel. Open your normal map in your 2D editor software. I'm going to do it in Photoshop to show you. You are going to need this channel tab here. If you don't have it by default, you can probably find it under window and search in this list. Click on the red channel, then hit Ctrl A to select everything and then Ctrl C to copy. Then click on the little plus here. It will add a new layer called alpha. Then hit on Ctrl V to paste and then click on the green channel, Ctrl C to copy, red channel, Ctrl V, and blue channel control V. And that's it, you have your normal map for the sims. So this is a process you are going to do a lot. So I'm going to repeat it so you can remember it. Red goes into alpha and green goes into red and blue. Once you've done it, you are going to export it in DDS. DDS is not a native format to do software. We are going to download a plugin in order to do so. There are two plugins available. The first one is from NVDA. It's called NVDA Texture Tools Exporter. I'm going to put the links in the video description and you will have two versions available. One is standalone and the other one is a special Photoshop plugin which makes the whole process much easier and faster. The second one is from Intel and it's the one I'm using. I don't think there's any difference between the two. I choose the Intel because the NVIDIA didn't work for mine, I don't know why. Any plugin will work. Once your plugin is installed, then you can hit File and Save As. And here, you will have in the scroll menu the option to export into DDS. You will have a new menu opening. Select Color plus Alpha BC3 8BBB Linear. You don't need to change anything else, so make sure you have those settings and click OK and there you go. If you're using the NVIDIA plugin, then you are going to put those settings DXT5 and then click Save. To import your new normal texture in your object, you are going to open Sims 4 Studio and go into the warehouse. Here you will have several textures. So usually the normal map is the first one right after the diffuse map. The diffuse map is the base color texture of your item. And then you'll have the specular map. To make the difference between the two, the normal map is always all gray, 
right? The rose knife, we sometimes have colors in it. It's possible as well that certain item will have several texture, like it's the case for this object. Because it's a bed, it will have a frame and bedding. I click on import and then look for my normal mod texture. Make sure you have DDS selected so you can see the normal map you just created. Then click on open. It will replace the normal map you just made. So not every item is gonna need a normal map because sometimes your item is just very simple or it doesn't have any detail, it doesn't have any relief and that's okay. You don't have to put a normal map on every item. But in the case you don't want any normal map in your item, you will have to use a blank normal map. To create a blank normal map, just create a small square like 64 by 64. Each channel needs to be filled with a 128 neutral gray. So click on the fill tool and then click on the color and put for the RGB value 128 for all three values. Then click OK and fill the colors. But you will also need to add an alpha channel. So click on the little plus here, fill with the same color and as we've seen before, save this in DDS. If you're not sure how to create your blank normal, I'm gonna put some blank normal map and specular map in the video description so you can use it for your item. Let's jump to the most important part of this tutorial, how to actually generate a normal map. There are three ways to create a normal map. The first one is by using a high poly model and a low poly model and then calculate the difference in space and volume between the two. The second one is using a PBR material. And the third one is using a website that will generate a normal map from an image file. The first method is to use a higher poly version of your model. You can either save your low poly model and then add the details that will be your high poly model. Or you can do the opposite. Make your high poly version, then save it, then reduce the polycount to make your low poly version. The high poly version doesn't have to be unwrapped. But the low poly version does, so make sure that it's completely unwrapped and that your UV map will be the same as the diffuse texture of your object. Substance Painter has a very effective and easy way to calculate the high poly model for the low poly model. Once you have opened your low poly model, click on Texture Set Settings and then click on Bake Mesh Maps. Here, click on this and select your high poly model. Don't forget to change the resolution. Even if it's not your final resolution, it's better to keep the most detail as possible and then to reduce later. Then click on Bake Selected Texture. Now, it will calculate the difference between the two. In this scroll menu, you can see the separated texture. If I click to Normal plus Mesh plus Height, it included the difference with the High Poly model. If your High Poly model has a huge difference of height or volume from your Low Poly model, you may want to adjust these settings, so the max frontal distance and the max rear distance will set the distance between the low poly and the high poly model. Just don't go too far because it's possible that you include other parts of the mesh itself. From now on, and that's the nice thing with Substance Painter, any other normal information that you will add to this texture will be automatically combined to the normal mesh we just calculated. If you don't use Substance Painter, you can still do it in Blender. The result will be exactly the same, but the operation is a little bit more complicated. In your Blender scene, append both your low poly and high poly model. They have to overlap precisely exactly the same. I recommend to name them clearly to avoid confusion. Make sure you are in Cycles Render here. So first, you need to create a material for your Lopoly model that will receive the baking. So go in the Material tab and click on the plus. Then make sure you have the Trilo selected and then click on New. This will open in your Node view. If you don't have this view, you can click on the little icon here and select the Node Editor. You don't have to change anything in this shader because it's not useful for what we are going to do. Create a new texture here by clicking on New. Select the resolution and as I said before with Substance Painter, it's better to have a higher resolution than your actual result. So I'm gonna put 2048. You can untoggle alpha because we don't need it, then click OK. Now I will create an image texture in the node. Shift A and select Texture, Image Texture. In the scroll menu here, I will select the texture I just created. Now, let's go to the Render tab. 
For the sampling, you don't need to have such high value because it's not useful for what we are going to do. Just 10 will be enough. Then go directly to the bake section and select in the scroll menu normal. Here you don't need any margin so you can put zero and then you have to toggle selected to active. The ray distance will be the distance between the low poly module and the high poly module that will be calculated between both. So to try, I'm going to put 0.1. You have to select the high poly model first and then hit shift and select the low poly model. So if you're not sure because they are too close together, you can always use the library here. So click first on the tree high and then shift click on the low poly model. Make sure that your high poly model is orange while the low poly model is yellow. Then click on bake. And here, you have the result, the same with Substance Painter in Blender. You can now save it on clicking on Image, Save as Image and select your destination path. The result from Blender still need to be edited in Photoshop. You are first going to replace this black background. To select the neutral colors of normal map is 128, 128 and 255. Select the fill tool and click. Now we can see here which is supposed to be the cut branch of this part and it has a very weird shape of bright colors. So this is not what we want so we can erase that by just painting over with the neutral purple color. Just erase the part we don't want. Then we do exactly what we did, meaning select the red channel, Ctrl E, Ctrl C, create the alpha channel, Ctrl V, select the green channel, Ctrl C, and then select the red channel, Ctrl V, and the blue channel, Ctrl V. We can now reduce the resolution because we don't need 2K, which is too high for the sims anyway. So 124 we do, and then we can save in TDS. The second method is to add a PPR material to your item, like the fiber of a wooden texture, or the wicker of a basket, or even the embroidery details of a fabric. I have downloaded some PPR material that I like. I just move it here and then put the setting right so I can have the result. You can see that the detail will be added to the original baking we made between the high poly and the low poly model. When I will export my texture, the normal map, we combined both calculation between the high poly and low poly and from the PBR material I applied. You can also do this in Blender but as usual, it's a little bit more complicated, especially when you will have to combine both the normal map that you calculated from the high poly model and from the PBR material. So my technique, and I'm not sure it's the more efficient, but this is how I was doing before using Substance Painter, is by uh, putting the normal map on the diffuse map and then baking it like a diffuse color. So I'm going to show you precisely the process because it involves complicated nodes in Blender. Once you have your item in your scene, you have to create a new material. So you click on the material here and click on plus to have your material. I will add my texture and I open and I can go looking for the high poly model normal map we created before. So because it's a normal map, you will need to put this color to non-color data. Then shift A and look for normal map. If you plug color to color and normal to normal and then go in render view, you can already see that the details we had from the normal map is applied to our model. Now, if I want to apply my PBR material, I will have to create a new image texture and then look for my wood texture. I'm going to choose in my library, so I'm going to use this one. So if I plug this texture to color, then you can see in random mode, it will apply the texture I chose. It's not in the right direction, so I will have to apply a texture mapping. Control A and look for texture coordinate, then Shift A and look for mapping you will have to plug the UV to vector and the vector to vector. Here are the coordinates of your new texture and we move the Z value to 90. So now that I like this one, I want to add the normal map from the same texture I just created. So I'm going to create a new texture and then I'm going to open, but this time I'm going to choose the normal. Because it has the same coordinates and the same value as the diffuse texture, I'm going to plug in in the same node. But this one, as before, will have to be non-color data and will need a normal map to be applied. 
But because this is only one and I already have one, just search for Mix RGB and then join both colors here. So how can I use this to make my normal map and then convert it for the sims? Instead of using the normal here, I will remove both the normal map and then put it back to colors for both. Then I will link the color directly to the mix RGB and instead of putting it to normal, I will put it to color. So you can see the result. It's the mix between the high poly model normal and the PBR material normal. So in the render tab, you can go directly to bake. You don't have to change the sampling value. You can let it in 10, it won't make any difference. You will choose diffuse color. Before clicking on bake, you need to create a texture that will receive the baking. Shift A, texture, image texture. Put it here and create a new one. So click OK and then put it here to receive the bake. And this will create your normal map. And finally, there is a third way, which is using a website that will transform an image file into a normal map. It's the case, for example, for this item, where I use the website to create the carving of the letters as if they were carved in the wood. So to do that, you need to create a file that will be used to generate a normal map. I used shades of gray to create the carving. So go in the website, I will put the link under the video description, and here you will enter the image file you created. It will instantly create the normal map. Once you have your setting rights, you can click on download and it will create your normal map. You can also use this website to create a normal map from a texture that doesn't have one. For example, for this item, I used a real life photography of a rug. So I just use the website and import my texture to create instantly a normal map. So now you know everything about normal maps. I know it can be a little bit intimidating, but it will also add a lot of quality and details to your item. It can also save you some polygon to add details, especially if you're doing maxi match objects. It can also seem like a lot of work for one item, but I can assure you it's totally worth it. And if you want to learn to create true quality content, then this is the way. This was my first tutorial for The Sims. I hope you understand everything. If you have any question, you can ask them in the comment. But I also have a Discord channel where everyone is welcome and where there is a special channel so creators can ask questions. If you like this video, please subscribe as there will be more coming.